What's going on everyone? I just wanted to do a video here on a project I've been working on. Uh, you may have seen some posts on Instagram if you follow me. But uh, I kind of did one of those trailer conversions. So I needed a trailer capable of getting my Polaris Ranger out to Idaho. Uh, so I was looking at a regular utility trailer and then I figured it might be better if I got a cargo trailer because it would also act like a storage storage unit for the ranger or you know uh kind of like a little little garage or whatever i did, wasn't sure of my housing arrangements at the time but i decided to go with this trailer here it's a 7 by 16 uh diamond cargo it's made by diamond cargo so from the factory i had them add uh the second roof vent which you can see i have two there now it only usually comes with one i had them add the side window uh, I have the trailer jacks, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them from here, but there's two jacks on the back there, which will support the rear end uh, if you disconnect it from a vehicle. So if you have too much weight in the end, it doesn't tip on you. And then I had the overall height added to it. There was uh, this is a seven foot ceiling, so I have a six six opening, you know, in the back there, so it has a little bit higher clearance, but nothing too too fancy. So what I've added to it is, this is a uh, double propane rack here, so I could fit two propane canisters. And then I just did a single regulator, uh, use one can at a time, one propane canister at a time. And then I also have like a, a cook, like kind of a big stove, so I can always hook it right to the second canister or whatever I need. I can always carry an extra in the truck if need be, but there's the break i had to relocate some stuff here change some stuff around make sure everything fit then uh along the side here i have my hookup down there for my hose and then here is my hookup for my my power plug plug that into a generator or uh, if i'm at a campground uh, it's a regular same as what comes on the campers we'll plug right in it's a 30 amp uh single phase plug so those parts there, I just you can order them right on Amazon. Uh, here is my exhaust and intake for my heater. And then walk around the back here. It's a little tight here. So uh, right on the back side of the door here, I actually mounted the spare tire. I'm not sure how that's gonna work yet. It seems to work fine now, but if I get somewhere where the terrain's a little uneven, the tire could hit the ground but here's a look at the inside so painted all the floors this was paint I had left over from the house so this is just a gray exterior paint as you can see it's the same as the foundation inside of the window but lighting I have 12 volt light here and this is a 110 light, regular, same as in your house. And another 12 volt light, another 110. So the center lights, as you can see, are a little bit off center. I First thing I did in here was rip half of the walls down. I took the top section off on this side all the way around. And I did the lower section over here because I didn't want to screw around with the window. And I was able to slide one inch insulating foam board up behind there i believe it was an r5 value so it's not too much but it's a lot better a lot uh, quieter in here so that insulated it up pretty good and then for the ceiling i i my opinion is the ceilings are usually like the weakest point of these trailers the way they make them so i was actually able to reframe it up you know i ran two by threes across with the existing frame then ran supports up and down in between and then i ran cross braces between my new support so uh everything is uh the ce the ceiling the roof itself is a lot better supported than it was so but because of my center supports i had to offset these lights just a little bit not that big of a deal but i hung some decorations in there to kind of make it feel like a little bit of a camp places to hang stuff to dry out so but my heater, I did a, this is from Empire. It's a 10,000 BTU propane direct vent. So it's a sealed unit. It does not take air from inside the camper. 
or trail or whatever you want to call it. It pulls fresh air from outside and all the exhaust goes outside. Very, very easy to use. Uh, they're a little pricey compared to the vent free heaters, which I actually was going to install vent free over here. But the problem with them is, is it sucks the oxygen out of the, the room. So I was a little scared about that. Uh, good chance I was going to go to sleep one night and not wake up in the morning. So uh, they recommend you keep windows open and vents, but that kind of defeats the purpose of insulating and sealing up the place. So uh, there's a switch on the wall here that controls just these two lights here in the middle. So I've got one there and one there. So that runs off a 12 volt battery. I have a second big battery, which is behind my cabinetry all the way up in the corner there. Uh, that is set up to run just the lights and stuff inside here. So that should last a very, very long time. So for the cabinets, uh, I basically just frame straight across on this and then support, you know, make built across the bottom here. Underneath here, I have, that's a 110 light you see in the front. And then underneath here, I have a 12 volt light and that, that just works from under here. Just flip the switch. That's one, one bulb or two. So pretty simple. Now for the 110, I put a 100 amp sub panel inside here and I have everything off of individual breakers. So if I ever have a problem with anything, I don't need all these breakers. But I have it set up that way. If I ever have an issue with something, I know it's one one wire, one circuit. Very easy to take care of. But I ran some eight gauge wire, which is rated for above 30 amps. This is only a 30 amp setup because of the plug. That's what a typical camper is. But I ran some eight gauge wire from the panel uh, to one of the lugs. And then I ran a jumper from one lug to the other lug with six gauge wire. So all my wiring, is way more heavy duty than I need it to be. Uh, and that's, I'm an electrician, I have this stuff laying around. So ran it down and it comes down behind here. Now it's all hollow behind this part so I can access everything. So I can run wires up and down through here. So it comes down and then you can see, it comes across there. And then I have a junction box. You can see right there in the corner. And then my cord goes down and my cord just coils up right here on the ground. And then I could just take and pull it out, plug it into my generator. Uh, or if I'm at a campground, like I said, I could plug it into their power. Now for switches, I've got two sets of switches here. I have one switch that works this light underneath. This is just everything's LED in here. And then I have a circuit going to this set of plugs and a circuit going to this set of plugs. Now each one of these plugs, uh, well, that one's pretty crooked. I need to straighten that out, but no big deal. I also added the USB ports in here. So uh, you can buy them that way, obviously. And then that is for charging, like this camera can be charged off of that, a bunch of other things, your cell phone, whatever you need, GPS units. So it makes it nice. Paper towel holder. Uh, the sink is out of an actual camper. So uh, I already owned a camper and we never used a kitchen or actually the bathroom sink area. So I took it, but I just hooked it up in here. It is right now, it's just directly plumbed straight out of the floor. Uh, I could put a trap on, on here. I could put it under here where it's supposed to be. I could put it outside, but I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. But right now, the sink is usable, but it runs out. Now I have it plumbed right now. You can see the pecs underneath. That just comes from the hose bib outside. So I can hook a hose to this and have water pressure here at the sink. So eventually you can see how I teed it off. There's going to be a pump with probably a small filter somewhere here. I just haven't got to this part. And that is going to run down underneath. And I actually found tanks that will fit in between the floor joists, which run this direction. I don't know if joists run this way. There's 16 on center. I actually found some tanks that will fit in between. So I would like to keep the tank back towards the axles, keep the weight back. And then I'll be able to run some pipe underneath, underneath the floor, you won't see it. And then pop it up here, which will go into a tank. That way if I don't have water available, I can fill the tank up and uh, just use the pump. And I'll just use a pressure pump. So until you call for water, like open the valve, the pump usually doesn't come on. Once the pressure starts to drop, the pump will kick on and keep the pressure up. So anyway, 
uh, that loop there, that's my propane line, which is just a 12 foot hosed regulator with the propane. I just put a hole up in the front, brought it up underneath, ran it across, and it runs across right here. And then there's a wire zip tied to that that goes back through here. And that actually comes up to here and that's where my thermostat is. So it's just much easier to control these heaters. Some of them come with thermostats, this one did not, but it is set up to hook up a thermostat. As, as you get it out of the box, it's basically just an on, on, on off function. So you turn it on, you turn it off. So I didn't want to have to deal with that all the time. So it's just uh, for what, 12 bucks, I think 16 bucks, you can get a cheap, what's well, basically a switch, uh, but it's a thermostat. And that way I can set the temperature and it will come on and off as the temperature, you know, you know as it gets warmer it drops. But anyway, so microwave, this came out of that other camper I have. Uh, it's gonna be staying on my property. I don't know if you've watched one of my older videos, but uh, the property where the camper, I had another microwave. I just left that up there and took this one since it mounted this way. And I just ran some straps, strapping back air off the microwave just to support some of the weight. And then this side here, just some storage. You can see that strap a little better. I just ran the, keep some of the weight off the back end of the microwave. And then what else we got here? Nice big countertop underneath. I just started storing some things in there. Tons of room. Uh, as you can see here, I just bought some cheap latches from Lowe's or Home Depot. They're easy to bend and just made them so I can just clip them on real easy. That way when I'm traveling, I don't have to worry about the door swinging open. So this is pretty inexpensive build. More storage space. So I've been packing up some stuff in there, but it's a pretty simple setup. So yeah, I have some plans for in the future. I might try to figure out how to make a screen door for this. Uh, something I can keep it open, keep the bugs out. Close this all up. I'm gonna probably hang a clothesline somewhere across the top here. Just some 550 cord with some eye loops on each end, just somewhere I can hang clothes to dry out if need be. Both of my roof vents, these work out really well. Uh, I actually have them just cracked. It lets some of the heat out of here, but the rain doesn't come in. So, pretty simple setup. So for sleeping arrangements, I am, uh, Right now, I'll probably just use cots. So it's basically just me as of now. Uh, if I ever get have you know a buddy or a guest or whatever wants to come, we can use two cots. If for some reason I have more than two, you can run people literally will fit perfectly fine this way. And you could put three, even maybe four if you absolutely needed to. And uh, you just would have to step over each other. But the only time you're gonna come in here is to sleep anyway, you know, or to warm up or whatever. So keeping it pretty simple. So if it's me and the wife, I'll probably just throw a big air mattress down right there and uh, should be more than comfortable. Room for coolers, you know, keep the Ranger. The Ranger only comes up right inside of here. So I have plenty of room and I still would have a lot of room in the front here to put other stuff. So that's basically it. Like I said, nothing too, too fancy, but this will be nice and comfortable. I could drag it around with me during hunting season when I go scouting, you know, have a place to come back. Uh, I'm just gonna use some water jugs for now if I don't have water. Uh, I've literally taken a bath out of this sink many times, so it's a little difficult, but hey, it's better than nothing. Feels good to just freshen up. I just use some water jugs and drain it right out and, until I get the water tank and that in, but all in all, works out pretty good. So you guys have any questions or comments or any ideas, you know, just please let me know. Let me know what you think. I appreciate it. Thanks guys. Hey guys, I'm Lou Rosito with Getting Lost. I just wanted to take a second and say thank you very much for taking the time to watch my um, not so great video. I'm working on it, I promise. I, I hope to continue to make uh, the quality of the video a little better and come up with some cool content and keep uh, pumping out videos, uh, hopefully at least twice a week. Uh, it's been a little rough right now because I am still living in Pittsburgh. Uh, the house is in shambles. We got everything, you know, almost packed up and ready to go. Hopefully I'll be out there by late summer. Uh, but anyway, please take a second and subscribe to my YouTube page, uh, Get Lost. Also check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Both of those are still getting lost. And uh, my website, uh, getlost.com. I have a bunch of cool content, 
uh, all the reviews, all the videos are going to be on there. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, any recommendations, uh, please contact me, lou at gettinglost.com. Thanks very much.